promotions will present a progress. showdown between Mexican superstars as pound for pound great Canelo Alvarez puts his undisputed super middleweight championship of the world on the line against unbeaten all action former world champion in Jaime Munguia. The 12 round matchup headlines a PBC pay per view event on Prime Video that comes your way on Saturday, May 4th from T Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Recently, we announced the lineup of all action pay per view undercard matchups. Four world championship fights on the card. It is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. It starts at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Our co main event will be for the interim WBC welterweight championship. Mario Barrios defends his title against a very determined Argentinian in Fabian Maidana. Then it'll be for the interim WBC featherweight championship. Before that, it'll be Brandon Figueroa matching up and putting his title on the line against Jesse Magdaleno. To open up the pay-per-view, it'll be for the WBA welterweight championship. A Montes de Nunes will defend his crown against the very determined Venezuelan in Gabriel Maestre. In addition to the pay-per-view being available for purchase on Prime Video, regardless of Prime membership, fans will also be able to purchase the pay-per-view via DAZN.com. On top of these options, fans will continue to be able to access the telecast through traditional cable and satellite outlets as well as pay-per-view.com. That is PPV. Dot com. The event promoted by Canelo Promotions in association along with TGB Promotions in association with Golden Boy Promotions and Zan for Boxing Promotions tickets are on sale and available at AXS.com. You do not want to miss this card. Four world championship fights coming your way on Saturday, May 4th as we celebrate Mexican Independence Day weekend. First off, we want to mention one of the gentlemen that will be involved in our first fight on the pay-per-view. His record, six wins, no losses, one draw. Five wins coming by way of knockout. A two-time Olympian out of Venezuela. He blasted out the former unbeaten rising prospect, Trayvon Marshall, in a round two last August out on the East Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gabriel Maestre. Gabriel, unas palabras, por favor. Bueno, muy contento por, por, por la entrevista y por esta gran oportunidad de pelear por el título mundial en esta gran cartelera de Carnelo vs. Munguía. De verdad que contento y, y nada, enfocado, enfocado. Eh, estamos teniendo un buen campamento y bueno, nada, para dar todo por el, todo el, ese día, el 4 de mayo. Very glad that I am here in front of all of you in the media. Very happy to be a part of this great card uh, of Canelo and Munguia, historic. And, you know, I'm also feeling really, really good because I had a great training camp, very focused, very on point, And I can't wait to show you guys what I'm all about. Thank you very much, Martin Botter, our outstanding translator, as always. Now we want to welcome in the champion, a 2016 Olympian, represented his native uh, Lithuania, now training in Los Angeles, earned his title with a hard-fought decision win over the previously unbeaten Radzab Butaya back in April of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated champion, Amates Steñones. Amates? Hello, hello. Can you uh, give us some opening comments on you know, how you're feeling? It's been a long time, you know, I'm very happy to be back in the ring. It, it feels amazing. I'm fighting on Cinco de Mayo on the big crowd. It's amazing. I can't express the feeling how, feel, how, how I feel. It's going to be a great fight. I know Maestra. So it's going to be fireworks. How hard have you been working so that there isn't ring rust that you have when you enter your world championship defense against Gabriel Maestre? I don't think I will have some ring rust because I, I'm living the the life of a, as an athlete. You know, every day I was training. I'm very disciplined fighter, so it will be no different. I'm in really good shape. I was from every day I could fight in six weeks. I just was waiting for the call. So now here we are. Gabriel, for you, you know, how would you assess? You know, Amantes Daniones, he's undefeated. Uh, he's very aggressive. It comes from, you know, he's an Olympian just like you. 
but quite accomplished. But, you know, how would you preview the champion, Iman Testeñones? Eh, bueno, eh, Gabriel eh, Stagnonis es un atleta olímpico tal y como vos lo sos. Y además, o sea, y él obviamente viene con el pedigrí de, de campeonato. ¿Cómo palpitarías vos lo que va a ser tu pelea contra Stagnonis? Sí, sí, yo sé que él, él estuvo en, la, en los Juegos Olímpicos de, de Río en el 2016, bueno, estuvimos los dos juntos y, y nada, nosotros nos conocemos, él, él me conoce a mí, yo lo conozco a él, peleamos en el, en el Mundial de, de Qatar en el 2015, él sabe que fue una pelea muy, muy dura, muy, muy aguerrida, ahí, bueno, él, él, fue una pelea muy apretada, pero de verdad que contento de pelear con él nuevamente en, en, este, en el ámbito ya profesional. De verdad que yo sé que, bueno, que es el campeón, que ha estado muy bien en todas sus peleas, pero bueno, vamos a ver qué pasa el, el 4 de mayo. Yo estoy feliz, de verdad que contento de, de pelear con él. Ya hace unos años atrás ya yo, yo quería pelear con él y bueno, ya nada. Dios ya metió su mano y para mí es un privilegio. Uh, it, is, uh, it is truly a privilege to fight against uh, Stagnonis. He's a champion. And I respect him a lot. I have been looking for this fight for a long time now. Funny how things come full circle. Keep in mind that, like you said, he's an Olympian. We were together at the Olympics in Rio in 2016. And before that, we had a really, really tough, close fight at the Qatar World Cup back in 2015. So, like, uh, the, the, it's been it's been worth the wait. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Stagnonis has now, almost a decade later. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Roberts, a member of our esteemed PR team. If you have questions, make sure to raise your hand when we call upon you. Come out with your question and mention your media outlet. Andrew, it is all you, my friend. Thanks very much, Ray. Uh, our first media question today will come from Keith Eidek. Keith, please unmute yourself and you can ask your questions. And oh, sorry, Keith, before you start, if you could please limit it to one question per fighter, per media member, it'll allow us to get to everyone. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, my first question is for Amantis. Amantis, can you uh, just explain to us how frustrating it's been for you? You won't have fought for two years by the time you get into the ring on May 4th. Can you explain how frustrating it was for you to go through those cancellations uh, with Virgil Ortiz and, and how it affected your career and your life? Hello. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was really hard times. You know, it was like, what's going on? You know, I, I just, what I want is just fight, you know, and they couldn't get a date. So they say next month, next month, next month. It's almost a year that the next month, you know. So it was hard, but I stay disciplined, always training hard, you know, and I'm living the life like professionally, like really, really hard to train. And I just believe, you know, in faith and God willing, I'll get a fight on May 4th. It's not, not yet, you know, I'm not in the ring. So I'll be happy when I will step in the ring. Okay, thank you very much. I have also a question for... For Gabriel Maestre, uh, can can you ask him, Martin, uh, what he remembers from the fight against Stan Jonas? What was the official result? Uh, how the fight went, and was that the only time that they fought as amateurs? Uh, okay, so to recap, then what he remembers, uh, then what was the result of the fight, and then his thoughts on on how it developed. I uh, know. Uh, ha have they fought? Was that the only time that they fought? Oh, was that the only time I fought? Okay. Eh, bueno, primero que nada, este, eh, esta fue la, fue la única vez que peleaste contra Stagnonis aquella vez en Qatar. Sí, 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 eh, fue la primera vez que, que me encontré con él en, en Qatar. Sí, la primera vez que peleamos en, en los Juegos Olímpicos de Río. No pudimos con, conseguir, ya que, bueno, él perdió, creo que la primera pelea y no pudo avanzar. Y, me, y yo gané la primera pelea y seguí avanzando a, a mi otra pelea. Okay, so we'll do this in parts that way everyone can get the, the answer from each from each thing. The first the first part is that yes, it's the only time that we fought uh, because in the Rio Olympics, if I don't remember uh, mistakenly, he lost in the first fight and I continue advancing. So we didn't get the chance to fight in Rio and then we didn't get to fight uh, in the pro. So I'm, I'm truly looking forward to getting the chance now to, to measure up against him once again. ¿Te acordás el resultado final de la pelea? ¿Cuál fue, cómo fue? Eh. Dividida, fue dividida, fue una pelea muy reñida, eh, pues cualquiera de los dos que, 
que, que, que le fueran a hacer la mano, bueno, eh, era el, el, el ganador, bueno, se lanzaron a él, pero fue una pelea muy dura, fue muy dura Entonces, y él lo sabe. ¿Te, te acuerdas el puntaje? ¿Lo, lo, ¿Qué dijeron los jueces? 3-2, 3-2, como que fue. It was a 3-2 split decision. And then uh, the, third one, the third one, Keith, could you please remind me? The third part? Keith? He, he, lo he lost the fight, right? Yeah, he lost the fight 3 to 2 split decision. Yes. And what was the third thing? And what, what weight was it at? Uh, in what division was it? What weight was it? 69 kilograms. 69 kilograms. Okay, and it was at the Qatar Cup. Is that what he said? I just want to make sure. Qatar, I... Qatar World Cup, but not the soccer okay. one in 2022, the, the 2015 Boxing World Cup. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks, Keith. Our next question is going to come from Ron Goodall with Fight Hype. Ron, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Awesome. Appreciate um, you guys taking the time to do this. Uh, my question's for both. Uh, obviously, They're going to be fighting for the WBA. Um, Mario Barrios will be defending his title. Is the ultimate goal to unify the titles with the, um, the winner of Mario Barrios? Or maybe look at maybe like a Jerron Ennis in the future? Uh, it's, it's for both of them? Who do you want to start? Uh, do you want uh, to start? Either or, for both. Okay, uh, Imantis, go ahead, start. Okay. Yeah, I think unification makes sense in a white wave and then go to get another titles so yeah i think unification with barrios will be great or maidano uh, okay que, bueno que entonces eh, la pregunta gabriel es considerando que barrios y maidana van a estar peleando el evento cuesteral también eh, cuál sería el objetivo si ganas esta pelea sería unificar irías en busca de barrios o maidana o quizás considerarías a but senis como como posible rival a futuro mira este bueno sí eh... Mi meta es, es unificar, de verdad. Ese es uno de mis sueños. Este es un, un sueño de, de todo boxeador. Eh, cuando, se, cuando te vas al, 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 cuando estás en, en amateur, bueno, tu sueño es ser, el medall, ser olímpico, medallista olímpico. Y cuando saltas profesional, de nada, ser campeón mundial y, y unificar. Y claro, con los mejores, con Janon Eni, o bueno, tal vez entre la pelea de, de Maidana y, y Mario Barro también ya que ellos van por un título de la WBC y nada, unificar, esa es la meta. Uh, absolutely, Unify, unification is the goal. And not only that, unification is my dream. It's kind of where like you check off boxes of the dreams that you want to come true. First in the amateurs, you want to be a gold, a gold medalist, right? Or, or, or at least win a medal. Then as a pro, you want to win a world title. And once you do that, you want to unify. And that's, that's what I plan to do. Either, either against Ennis or against the winner of Barrios against Maidana. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ron. The next question is going to come from Dario Nicholas Bess with La Casaca Boxing. Dario, please unmute yourself. You can ask your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a question for each boxer. Uh, first for Maestre, uh, La Edad es solo un número. Lo ha demostrado Barroso, ¿no? Un con nacional tuyo, un venezolano, otro venezolano más que hizo locuras en la división. Nos volaste la cabeza, vos particularmente, con la pelea que hiciste contra Trevor Marshall. Fue muy buena esa pelea, realmente me sorprendió. ¿Qué significa, obviamente, ir a, ante un segundo invicto consecutivo? Y encima, yo me estoy enterando de esto ahora también, esto es una revancha entonces, no es la primera vez que se cruza, esto es una revancha. Así mismo es, así mismo es este. Bueno, como tú bien lo dijiste, le, le dejo un número y ahí tenemos a, 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 a mi compatriota Imael Barroso, que bueno, que muchos peores le andan huyendo, no sé por qué. Debe ser que, que, que debe pegar duro, de verdad. Eh, y nada, este, sí, ya yo pe había peleado con Estaniones en, en Amateur en el 2015, en el Mundial de Qatar. Y nada, y contento ahora que bueno, eh, nos vamos a encontrar. Y sí. El año pasado tuve una prueba contra Juan March y bueno, ahí está, ahí, ahí, ahí dimos el, el resultado. Y por eso es que estamos ahorita en, en espera de esta pelea con, con, con Estañoni. De verdad que yo siento y presiento que, bueno, que eso va a ser una, una gran batalla. Uh, the question was about, you know, his age, whether, you know, what Barroso did inspires him uh, to come out and also shock the world. 
And then also like he was surprised that this was a rematch, you know, he didn't know. So Gabriel was like, you're absolutely right. It's a rematch, nine years in the making. Can't wait because it's going to be a great battle out there. So, and like you said, age is just a number. What Barroso did uh, was was really notable, you know, tip I had to him. And I, you know, I want to emulate my, my compatriot now and, and, you know, put Venezuela up high and keep, you know, and keep showing what I showed last year against Marshall. You know, keep keep advancing, keep progressing. Gracias, Maestre. Thank you, Martin. Gracias. Uh, for Stanionis, uh, finally, we, we have got a fight are going. Sadly, <laughs> your fights have been postponed over and over, and uh, you're a thrilling fighter to see. Uh, and it's very sad to see you below the ring. But you have an interesting fight in front of you now. Uh, you surprised everyone winning against Butaev last time. Uh, it was a great fight. But are you ready to showcase your skills against uh, the doubters more than just Maestri? Yeah, for sure. You know, everybody thinks I, I've been two years off and, you know, nobody knows me, nobody remembers me. But on May 4th, I will show that I'm back, you know, and I will put a great performance like I always do. And especially on Cinco de Mayo, you have to come with something special. So I will be prepare prepared. All right. Thanks, Dario. Uh, our last question for this pair of fighters is going to come from Lance Pugmire with Boxing Scene. Lance, please unmute yourself and you can ask your questions. Okay, thank you. I am honest. I just wanted to ask you, um, just elaborating on the point you just made, your opportunity uh, after this long layoff, I'm sure you've been working to develop your skills. And this is such a sensational card, like you said, Cinco de Mayo. Is this actually like a golden opportunity for you? What should fight fans see about the new and improved version of yourself? Yeah, I trained very hard. And I'm to be honest, I'm very very hungry for this fight i never been so hungry to get a w you know and win all my country every day where i go all my in my country everybody asking when i'm fighting every single day i'm not going to lie you know so now we got a fight we got a date my country is behind me everybody supporting and i want also to give the fans like a good fight so i was training and nothing changed you know same me just getting better every time and improving that's most important thing Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lance. Uh, and thank you both, Amantas and Gabriel, for your time. With that, I'll turn it back over to Ray Flores. All right. Thank you very much to Amantas Daniones and Gabriel Maestre. We wish them all the best of luck, and we look forward to seeing them both during fight week in Las Vegas. Now we will transition to our next pay-per-view matchup. This one is for the interim WBC featherweight championship of the world. First of all, I want to bring on the challenger. This man with a record of 29 wins, two losses, 18 wins coming by way of Naka, a former super bantamweight world champion, earned that title with a decision victory over future Hall of Famer Nonito Don Air. He has been on a stellar run at featherweight. Four in one is his record here at 126 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a Las Vegas native. Here's the former world champion, Jesse Magdaleno. Jesse, how are you? Can we go just unmute yourself, Jesse? There we go. Hello. Jesse, how are you feeling heading into your matchup against Brandon Figueroa? I feel great, man. You know, I've been putting in the work. Uh, I've been staying in the gym, you know, um, but first and foremost, you know, I always got to thank the man above. They got to thank God for, uh, you know, this opportunity. Um, I also want to thank Brandon Figueroa and his team for uh, accepting this fight. And, um, you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a great show. And also, PBC, thank you for, uh, you know, allowing me allowing me to be on your guys' platform. All right, Jesse, we'll come back to you in a few short moments. Now we want to bring on the champion. He earned his title in his last bout in a fight of the year candidate against the former world champion Mark Maxayom of the Philippines, captured the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship with a knockout to defeat Luis Netti, eventually losing the title, a unification matchup against Stephen Fulton that ended in a disputed decision. His record, 24 wins, one loss, one draw, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the reigning and defending interim WBC featherweight champion of the world from Westlaco, Texas. We welcome on the heartbreaker, Brandon Figueroa. Brandon, how are you? Hello. 
Hello. Yeah, Brendan, how are you? Right, there you go. Hey, uh, first off, you know, I want to thank God. Um, I want to thank God uh, uh, for blessing me this opportunity. I mean, it's a big fight. Uh, I've been waiting for almost, you know, a year. You know, the Rey Vargas fight kept uh, being put back. But now, you know, we're here. Uh, big shout out to Jesse as well. And my team, uh, PBC, you guys, uh, the media, you guys are amazing. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm just blessed and happy to to have this opportunity and finally fight. You know, just how Senios was saying that, you know, people were asking him, when are you going to fight, when are you going to fight? Uh, same goes here. So I'm just happy and blessed that, you know, the fight's already here and, um, you know, just getting ready and prepared for it. Jesse, for you, you know, when it comes to – you have a lot of experience. Uh, Brennan also has been in some tough fights, but do you feel that you have the edge and experience over Brendan Figueroa? I mean, of course, you know, I, I've been, I've been in the ring, you know, a long time. I've been in there with some great fighters. Um, I have a, a huge amateur, uh, you know, fights as well too. You know, I, I've been, I've been boxing for a long time and uh, I know Brandon has, you know, been putting his time, his, his hard work in, in the sport uh as well and um you know I, I don't overlook anybody i know everybody comes ready everybody comes prepared everybody's hungry and um you know i'm just ready to get back in there ready to get back in there and show the world um what i'm truly about what version of jesse magdaleno are we going to see on saturday may 4th i don't know i got the blonde hair back and you know the last time i had the blonde hair i became world champion so um i'm just i'm just ready man i'm just ready to get back in there and uh you know just to show everybody what I'm, what I'm about. Like we're back in my hometown again. Um, and I just, you know, I'm just pleased and very happy to be, uh, be back at, at, in, uh, in the ring. All right, Jesse. Now we'll talk with the champion, Brandon Figueroa. Brandon, you're no stranger to being involved in fight of the year candidates, high contact fights. You love to mix it up and go toe to toe. Because you are younger than Jesse. Do you feel like youth is going to, you know, be on your side? Uh, no, I mean, I just think hard work, discipline, uh, you know, dedication, everything that it takes to be at the top of, of your game and, you know, win these fights. Uh, you know, I feel like youth is just, I mean, youth is just a number. It's just whoever wants it more, whoever's hungry, whoever uh, 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 wants to, you know, just go out there and, and, and take it. That's That's what I feel like boxing is. The beauty of boxing is you work your butt off, you go out there, you put everything together and... Uh, um, you come out with the victory. Do you like the prospect of fighting a guy that's not going to be difficult to find inside that ring? You know, you love to cut off the ring. You like to rip the body. Uh, it, does it excite you knowing that this guy in Jesse Magdaleno is not going to be too hard to fight on Saturday, May 4th? I mean, that's that, that's a plus. You know, I mean, you, you guys know I love to mix it up. You guys know I love to get in there and 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 work the body and work the inside game, but like I said, I'm, I got to do what I got to do to to win the fight, uh, to make it look impressive. So, you know, I just got to go out there and see how, how Jesse's coming and, and adapt to that and, you know, uh, work my way around that. But, you know, definitely it's going to be fireworks. That's all I know. It's going to be a great fight, great show for, for the fans. And, like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to fight the same way I know he's, he's going to come to fight. So, uh, I'm pretty sure we're, we're, we're going to be able to, to mix it up in there. Um, so, that's what I'm looking forward to, yeah. All right, right now I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Roberts once again from the media. If you have questions, raise your hand. Let us know what media outlet you're from and ask questions to both Jesse Magdaleno and the champion, Brandon Figueroa. Andrew, it's all you. All right, thanks very much, Ray. Our first question is going to come from Keith Eidek with Premier Boxing Champions. Keith, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Uh, my first question is for Brandon, and it's twofold. Brandon, I was just wondering, do you because Ray Vargas had a draw with Nick Ball and there seems to be some interest in a rematch, do you feel that that if you beat Jesse uh, next month, that that will be your next fight against Ray Vargas or that you might have to wait longer? And if you do have to wait longer, do you think that a rematch with Stephen Fulton is something that could materialize later this year? Hey, man, I'm like, like I said, like I've been waiting for Ray Vargas last year, I've been training for months and months. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, this I've been patient. This opportunity, this opportunity came uh, and I took it. You know, I just said, you know what, let's fight. I've, I've been itching to fight. I've been itching to get back in the ring and give fans a great show. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, 
whatever. I just want to fight the best of the best. I want to fight the, the champions. And R. Vargas decides he wants to fight later this year, then let's get it. If not, then Stephen Fulton. I mean, I'm I'm just down to fight whoever, uh, whoever's down to fight, whoever's down to make amazing, exciting fights, fight, fight of the year candidates. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I just want to fight the best of the best. That's that's always been my goal. That's since day one. And I want to prove not only to, to myself, but to everyone that, you know, I, I, I want I want these fights. I want these big fights. I want these big names. And, and I want to keep, you know, winning these titles. Thank you, Brandon. And my question for Jesse, Jesse, what would it mean? You've been through a lot in your career, obviously. What would it mean for you to, you know, to, on May 4th to, to pull off what would be considered an upset and to become a, you know, an interim champion and put yourself in a great position. Man, that'd be great. You know, it's, um, it's what's been on my mind. It's what has me focused. It's what has me in the gym, you know, working my ass off for this. Um, you know, being a guy like Brandon is it's, it's, it's huge, you know, because, uh, he comes to fight and he, he puts a hell of a show, uh, each and every time he steps into the ring and, um, you know, as, as well as I do, you know, we, we, we both um, like to bang it out. We both like throwing, a, you know, a lot of punches and uh, we're both heavy hitters. And um, I just know May 4th, you know, uh, winning, winning the title, winning the WBC title, you know, it, it's going to be something huge for me. And um, I'm just excited. I'm excited for this. Thank you, Jesse. All right. Thanks very much, Keith. Our next question is going to come from Alfredo Sanchez with Tell Me the 60. Alfredo, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Uh, yes, uh, Alfredo Sanchez from KRGV, Noticias RGV in the Rio Grande Valley. This is a, a double question if I'm permitted for Brandon in Spanish. Um, Brandon, primero, felicidades por el regresar al cuadrilátero. ¿Cómo se siente de pelear en una cartelera que está eh, al igual pues estás compartiendo cartelera con Canelo Álvarez un, un mexicano un boxeador muy reconocido cómo se siente de, de, de ser una, una de parte de una pelea de Canelo Álvarez que se llevará a cabo el 4 de mayo no sí por supuesto primeramente gracias a Dios por esta oportunidad uh, me ha bendecido a mí y a mi familia uh, sí estoy muy estoy muy uh, feliz por esta oportunidad y Yo sé que es una cartelada muy grande. Yo sé que todos van a, todo mi, mi, mi gente del RGB, de Tamalipa, de México, van a estar viendo esta pelea, me van a estar apoyando. So, estoy bien agradecido por todo lo que me da Dios y no solamente eso, pero pues, gracias a PBC, gracias a todos que, que hizo eso posible. Estoy listo, estamos listos, eh, estamos entrenando, entrenando por mucho tiempo ahora y ahora nada más es tiempo de poner todo junto y, y pues sí, a, a acabar. A, los últimos detallitos aquí en el campo de entrenamiento para ir a la pelea al 100% y darle a los fans um, un great show. So, estoy muy, no, no, no sé cómo describirlo, pero ya estoy muy asocio para uh, entrar al ring y pues para hacer una buena pelea contra Jesse. The question was what it means to Brandon uh, to be a part of the Canelo Munguia card. Uh, Brandon, you want to do the same uh, answer by in English? Yes. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, want to thank God, PBC, everyone that put this together, a uh, great opportunity and blessed uh, uh, for me and my family. I'm just very anxious to get back in a ring, very excited uh, to give fans a great show. I know, you know, it's been a long time since I've gotten back in a ring, but, you know, I'm just happy and blessed to, to be able to share the ring with Jesse and, you know, give fans a great show. You know, it's going to be an all Mexican uh, a card Mexican atmosphere. I can I already feel it, and I know my people from the RGV 956 back home will be supporting and 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 you know pushing me on. So I'm grateful for that. And one more for for Brandon. Uh, otra vez en español, Brandon. Entonces, eh, obviamente se conoce que tuviste que esperar casi un año. La última vez que tuvimos. Eh, El privilegio de verte en el cuadrilátero fue contra Maxayo, fue en marzo, entonces desde ese entonces eh, ha habido una ausencia. Eh, ¿Qué tan frustrante se sintió? ¿Qué tan paciente tuviste que estar para finalmente regresar al cuadrilátero? Que ya tenemos ya establecido la pelea contra Jesse Magdaleno. Entonces, eh, lo frustrante que fue y lo paciente que tuviste que ser. No, sí, claro. Um, en, este, en este deporte tienes tiene que ser uh, muy paciente. Uh, Yo sé que mi tiempo iba a venir, yo sé que siempre Dios uh, pone todo en tu camino, nada más era tiempo de, 
sí, nada más esperarte, ten, tener uh, paciencia y es algo que yo siempre cargo muy, muy uh, de, dentro de mí, siempre ser paciente y esperar en los momentos perfectos. Yo sé que a la mujer en el momento, pues yo sé que sí, ya, ya quería pelear y, y no al otro mes, al otro mes, al otro mes, pero uh, siempre tener, yo solamente siempre tener la paciencia de, de seguir trabajando, seguir esperando y pues mira, una oportunidad muy grande en la cartelera de Canelo es, es wow, es, es algo muy emocionante para mí, mi familia y pues sí, es, eh, yo digo que son beneficios y sacrificios que un boxeador tiene que uh, hacer para tener esas oportunidades muy grandes. So, uh, sí, yo sé que, que ha sido mucho tiempo sin, sin pelear, pero aquí estamos listos y uh, con mucha hambre. Uh, the question was about, you know, how he handled the, the weight of 15 months ever since we saw uh, Brandon fight against Magsayo, how, how he handled the, the ring rest and both the, the psychological and physical part of it. Brandon? In English, uh, if you want to say the same thing, but in English, please. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I just had to be patient. You know, I know that, you know, yeah, it's a little frustrating, but, you know, as a boxer, I'm, I'm pretty sure every boxer knows that, you know, you know, boxing comes and goes, you know, you may have a fight in, in a few months, you may not. Um, and I know it's all part of the business, all part of, of the sport. So sometimes you just have to be patient, let God handle all things above you and let him align. Uh, uh, what he wants for you in your path. And look, you know, a big car like Anello is going to be an all Mexican card. And I just couldn't be more happy about that. So it's a big fight. And, you know, I, I'm here for these big fights and I'm ready for these big fights. So uh, I'm just happy and blessed that, you know, May 4th will, you know, finally I'm, I get to go out there and do my thing. All right. Perfect. Thank you for those questions, Alfredo. Uh, next up, Lucas Cattell for Boxing Scene. Lucas, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Thank you. Um, I've got a question for both and it's the same question. What do you see in your opponent and what are kind of, what? how do you see the matchup potentially playing out and what are some of the strengths and weaknesses um, that you initially see? Jesse, if you want to start off. Um, you know, I know... Um... I know Brandon comes to fight, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's a very, um, forward fighter. He comes forward. He throws a lot of punches, you know, he's very, um, he, he comes in, in great shape. You know, there's, there's never a doubt where he's, uh, not in good shape. So, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're, we watch tapes, you know, we watch what he does and, um, you know, he's, he's just, a, he's a good fighter and, um, you know, as well as I am. And, um, we come ready, we come ready and every time I don't, I don't overlook anybody. Like I said before. You know, we're just here to uh, to showcase what, what we got. You know, I have I have a lot left in me in my tank, and um, I know I'm ready to I'm ready for May Fourth. You know, it's a big fight, it's a big fight card, and uh, first and foremost, I'm just you know super excited about this. You know, it's it's a great fight, it's a great matchup for me for my style, and um, I'm just you know I'm just waiting for the fireworks. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight. All right, and then Brandon, if you could please answer the same question. Yeah, of course. I mean, like I know Jesse's a former world champion for a reason. He's been in there with best of the best, and that's all I could ask for. You know, just someone that's willing to fight, someone that's willing to give fans a great show, uh, someone that it's not going to be hard to, hard to look for. And like he said, it's going to be fireworks. Uh, so I'm just excited. I can't wait. You know, this is something that I've been waiting for almost a year and. And, you know, I have a great opponent, a great opponent like Jesse for, for us to give fans a great show and for me to showcase my skills the same way as he wants to showcase his skills. And, you know, we're both hungry. Um, you know, I feel like this layoff uh, uh, really brought back that, lit that fire in me again to, you know, just want to go out there and, and, and make statements and, you know, just win impressively. You know, that's what boxing is all about is win impressively, uh, uh, impress everyone and, you know, keep getting these big fights. So I just can't wait for, for May 4 to come for us to, you know, share the ring and just do what we love to do is fight and, and, and give fans a great show. All right, perfect. Thank you for that question, Lucas. Uh, last up for this pair of fighters, Ernesto Amador with No Puedes Jugar Boxeo. Ernesto, if you could please unmute yourself, you can ask your questions. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna have one question for Jesse, another one for Brandon. And, uh... I will ask in Spanish. Eh, Jesse, Ernesto Amador de No Puedes Jugar Boxeo, 
Un placer saludarte, Jesse. Eh, siento que la gente se equivoca al decir que llegas eh, casi casi por el cheque. Te vi ganarle a Lorito Doner, conozco tu carrera y además puede ser una de tus últimas oportunidades de título. ¿Qué estás dispuesto a hacer para probarle a la gente que esté equivocada contigo? Pues yo ya sé que la gente se equivocan, dicen cosas de mí. Ah, pero está bien. Yo no, yo no pienso en eso. Yo no pienso que le, lo que dice la gente. Yo enfoco en lo que estoy haciendo. Um, enfoco en mi entrenamiento. Yo le doy 100% a este, a este deporte. Igual a, 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 a yo solo le doy 100% cada vez que, que entro a, al, al a ring. Y, y pues yo estoy aquí listo, listo para pelear con, contra Figueroa. Yo sé que es un, un peleador bueno. Yo sé que mucha gente nomás me ve que, ah, nomás está por los cheques. No estoy por los cheques. Estoy para hacer mi, mi legacy, para pa todavía ganar los, los títulos y pelear por los títulos. Um, la mucha gente que habla así no, no sabe boxeo, no, nunca han peleado, nunca um, agarra, ha recibido un golpe o nada de eso. So, eso no, no me importa. Lo que me importa es que yo, yo me siento bien, yo estoy listo y yo sé que con la fe de Dios uh, vamos a, a salir con la mano alta. Ok. Uh, well, so the, question, the question was about how he about Jesse deals with the outside noise, uh, you know, and, and everything that comes with it. Jesse, would you, me, me podrías hacer un favor y decir lo mismo que acaba de decir ahora, pero en inglés para los periodistas en inglés, por favor? Sí. Uh, go ahead, uh, he's going to say it in English. You know, uh, a lot of people overlook me. A lot of people, you know, they doubt me. They 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 say things about me. You know, it's it's been like that since the beginning of my career. And uh, and honestly, I don't care. You know, I don't care what people got to mm -hmm. say. As long as I'm uh, dedicated to myself and dedicated to my my craft and you know my job and what I'm supposed to do, you know, um, honestly, the people with they whatever they got to say, it, it doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I know with uh, with my faith with God and and uh, all the hard times that I've been through and everything, you know, I'm I'm focused, I'm ready. You know, I didn't get you know a good outcome my last fight, but you know, I, I'm just ready. Yeah, I know Brandon comes ready, I come ready. You know, and um, It is what it is. You know, people talk, they've never put on a, the people that talk, they never put on a pair of gloves. They don't know what it feels like to get in the ring and to, uh, you know, risk your life and, you know, battle it out with another great, you know, a great fighter. And, um, you know, so with that being said, I, I don't care what people got to say. I don't care what the, the critics have to say about me because at the end of the day, uh, I come ready each and every time and I want to, um, you know, just fight for the best, fight, fight against the best and fight for, you know, all the titles. And uh, that's what we're here to do. Eh, esta pregunta es para eh, Brandon. Brandon, te saludo con mucho gusto, resto amador de No Puedes Jugar Boxeo. Eh, Brandon, eh, qué gran oportunidad de pelear en una cartelera de Canelo y Munguía. La gente dice que no eres mexicano por tus ojos azules, porque eres de piel blanca. ¿Qué estás dispuesto a hacer para demostrarle al público en una noche tan mexicana que también tienes sangre mexicana en tus venas, Brandon? Oh, yo sé, esa es una de, de las cosas que siempre me, me dicen que yo no soy mexicano, pues mis padres son nacidos en, en México, Tamaulipas, en Río Bravo. Uh, nos criamos en México. Yo tengo la sangre bien, bien pesada. Y no solamente eso, pero pues yo sé que la gente se equivoca. Uh, pero ya el, el cuarto de mayo se van a dar cuenta que yo soy un peleador mexicano, más mexicano que nada. Uh, tengo la, la sangre bien pesada y yo, yo creo que uh, uh, se van a dar cuenta que soy uno de esos peleadores mexicanos tradicionales que como uno de los Julio César Chávez, uh, Pepito Cuevas, todos los peleadores uh, que eran en, en, en México, yo quiero ser uno de ellos, quiero re representar a mi país, porque yo creo que sí es mi país, son mis raíces, y no solamente eso, pero yo quiero enseñarle a todos que nada más porque tengo los ojos azules, la piel blanca, no significa nada, yo vengo a pelear uh, y, y, y darle a los fans a un great show, uh, Cuarto de Mayo va a ser uh, algo espectacular para mí porque yo quiero enseñar cosas nuevas, quiero impresionar a, a la gente, no solamente eso, pero cargar el, el, el nombre de México en mi espalda y representarlo muy bien. The question was, uh, you know, what, uh, what's your reaction when people say that you're not, they don't see you as Mexican because you're a white guy with blue eyes, Brandon? 
No, yeah, I mean, I always get mistaken. Um, even as a as a baby, my mom would carry me to cross the border back to her hometown, Rio Bravo, Tamaulipas, and they would always stop her and question her, asking if she had kidnapped them an American baby. Because mind you, all my siblings, you know, brown skin, brown eyes, uh, and I was the only one really white complected, uh, uh, dark blue eyes. So you know, a lot of people would would ask her if, if she would babysit an, an American family. And and to me, you know, that's I, I I don't care about that. You know, I I just want people to know me for me, and I carry the Mexican blood deep in me. And I love Mexico. I love my roots. And you know, it, it kind of does hurt when people don't uh, uh, consider me Mexican, uh, despite my parents, you know, both being born and raised in Mexico, and us being uh, uh, raised in Mexico as well. So. Um, you know, I guess I got to show them May 4th that, you know, I'm a traditional Mexican fighter. I come forward, uh, um, you know, my mindset and my demeanor, everything represents Mexico and I love my Mexican roots and I want to represent my Mexican roots and, you know, worldwide, you know, I want to show everyone that, yeah, I'm an, I'm an American and Mexican boxer, but, uh, I consider myself a little bit more Mexican, uh, due to my roots and, you know, I even have an accent. A lot of people say I have an accent and, you know, like I said, I just love uh, carrying Mexico on my back. So, yes, I can't wait to showcase that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people get impressed on my Spanish, but, you know, it's it's something that's been instilled in me since I was a kid. All right, Brandon and Jesse. Thank, thank you very you so much. Yeah, thank, sorry, Ray. Thank you very much for that, Ernesto. And thank you to both Brandon and Jesse for your time today. With that, I'll turn it back over to Ray. Thanks thank so much. We appreciate the time. Brandon and Jesse, good luck. We'll see you guys during Fight Week in Las Vegas. Cool. See you guys soon. All right. Now we get to our co-main event, our final matchup that we're going to be dissecting here on this call. It is for the interim WBC welterweight championship of the world. First of all, we want to bring on the challenger. 22 wins, two losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the younger brother of former two-division world champion Marcos Maidana. He enters this fight having won four straight, looks to make it five in a row, and become a world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Margarita Santa Fe, Argentina. Here is Fabian TNT Maidana. Fabian, unas palabras para la gente. Bueno, primero que nada, hola a todos. Y bueno, nada, contento de, de estar en esta cartelera de Canelo como un guía. Y bueno, ser la coestelar de esa noche, así que nada, contento, feliz y esperando que llegue el 4 de mayo. Uh, well, first of all, thank you everyone. And I'm really happy to be a part of this great card, Canelo, Munguia, everything that it represents. And I can't wait until May 4th comes around. All right, we're going to get to you in a few short moments. Now we want to bring on the champion. He comes to us from San Antonio, Texas, training in Las Vegas, scored a career bass victory in his last outing when he was able to drop former world champion Yoda Dennis Ugas twice en route to a unanimous decision victory. He is a former super lightweight champion of the world and now the reigning and defending interim WBC well to a champion of the world. He possesses a record of 28 wins, two losses, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the always entertaining and the champion, Mario El Azteca Barrios. Mario, how are you? I'm doing great, brother. I will, um, you know, happy to be here. Happy to be on, um, I have this opportunity. Um, just, you know, excited once again. Mario, you fought on the last Canelo card when he fought Jermel Charlo, but now when c celebrating Cinco de Mayo, you're the co-main event against Fabian Maidana uh, as the main event is Canelo and Munguia. What does this opportunity mean to you? You've been on big cards before, but this one particularly on May 4th. Yeah, no, it's uh it's huge, you know. I'm I'm just, you know, I'm just very grateful. Uh, you know, the, the last fight, you know, being was the first time I had been on the Canelo undercard. Um and you know, that was uh that was an unreal experience. And you know, now I have, you know, this opportunity, you know, being the co main on uh single de Mayo weekend. Um you know, it's uh, that's hard for me to put into words. I'm just, you know, like I said, grateful. Um, I'm motivated. You know, I'm focused, and you know, I'm um, just you know getting ready for uh, for May Fourth. 
You've accomplished a lot in your career. I remember when you were fighting in the lighter weight classes, you know, on ESPN. And now, you know, you're here at 147. You know, you were former world champion at 140. Do you feel like a young veteran? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I do, actually. It's funny because in the in the gym, Bob Santos will call me a, a veteran every now and then. And I'm always like, like, man, dude, like, relax. Uh, <laughs> but you know it's, it's uh and i've been professional now in you know, 10 years you know i've started at 126 um it's been a it's been a long road but you know i'm just you know very happy you know where things have gone with my career you know i've stayed focused you know i've stayed grounded i've kept you know good people around me and um you know i i think you know that's the reason why you know everything has gone this way all right, now we're going to talk with the challenger, Fabian. Is this the fight, you know, people mention about how you're the brother of Marcos Maidana, but is this the fight where you're able to step out of his shadow and, and really sort of cement your status as being your own entity? ¿Entendés que esta es la pelea, Fabian, en la que vas a poder salir de la sombra de tu hermano y dejar de ser el hermano de, para ser Fabian el campeón de? Fabian? Bueno, bueno, sí, te escuché. Eh, no, yo creo que yo hice mi camino, eh, siempre eh, hice mi camino en el boxeo, así que nada, eh, gracias a Dios que, que me dio esta oportunidad de, de estar peleando un título del mundo, así que nada, contento, feliz y, y enfocado en, en ganarme ese título ese día y, y demostrar de, de que estoy hecho. Uh, no, look, I've always made my own way. I've never, I've never seen myself as being in the shadow of anybody. And thank God I have this opportunity to be in this great card, to have the chance to fight for the title. And my goal is going to be to be to be a champion and showcase my skills on May 4th. How much confidence do you have having won four in a row? You're on a roll here, but the momentum that you feel heading into this matchup against Mario Barrios on May 4th. ¿Qué tan importante es el envión que sentís cuando estás enrachado de esta manera con cuatro victorias al hilo? ¿Cómo te ayuda eso de cara a esta pelea? No, la verdad que esta pelea es diferente a todas, ¿no? Este es un título del mundo, así que estoy muy emocionado. Eh, estamos terminando la preparación acá en Las Vegas. Y nada, contento, contento, feliz de, de este combate. Y bueno, ese día darle un buen espectáculo a la gente y, y poder llevarnos el cinturón para Argentina. This fight is unlike any other. It's a world title fight, so can't really compare it to the four, to the four fights I won before. But what I can tell you is that I want to show up and show out on May 4th, uh, go out there, win the fight, and bring the belt back to Argentina. All right, right now I'm going to turn it over to Andrew Roberts from the media. If you have questions, raise your hand, and then come out and ask your questions to Mario Barrios and Fabian Maidana. Andrew? All right, thanks very much, Ray. Our first questions are going to come from Keith Eidek with Premier Boxing Champions. Keith, please unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. Thanks, Andrew. My first question is for uh, Mario. Mario, I, I was just wondering, I, I know you can't look past Madonna here, but you're heavily favored going into the fight. And I was just wondering if you could tell us what types of fight you fights you hope happen for you later this year, assuming you're able to win this fight, you know, maybe potentially Stan Jonas and Maestre, the winner of that fight, or, or who else you might be looking at for unification fights. Yeah, um, you know, the welterweight division is the just stack division. You know, we have a uh, a really exciting, you know, um, what's the way, you know, championship fight, you know, opening up the card uh, with um, Maes today and Stanley Onis, you know, both, you know, tremendous fighters. Um, but yeah, no, you know, looking forward, uh, you know, first, you know, I, I have to, you know, go in there and have the business, you know, with, um, um, with Fabian and, you know, given, you know, everything goes our way and, uh, and then how we're planning. Well, then, uh, you know, I, I want, you know, those are those big fights that I want, you know, whether it's the unification fight between the winner, whether it's boots, you know, I want to, you know, just fight the best in the division. Um, I've always, you know, taken, you know, the hardest fights, you know, in my career. And, you know, that's exactly what I know I intend on, um, you know, continuing. Thank you, Mario. I just have a question for Fabian as well. Uh, Martin, if you could just ask Fabian if he could take us back to when he was supposed to fight your Dennis Ugas on the Spence, uh, you know, when uh, Spence was supposed to fight Pacquiao and then 
Of course, he suffered an eye injury of his own. I was just wondering if he could detail to us exactly what the eye injury was. Was it career threatening? Uh, and did he think that maybe he had lost his opportunity? He's obviously fighting for a welterweight title here, but did he think that that opportunity might have passed him by uh, when he got injured before he was supposed to fight Ugas? Volvamos en el tiempo a como cuánto, hace un año y medio, cuando Spence y Pacquiao iban a pelear. Bueno, y, y vos ibas a pelear contra Ugas. Spence tuvo su lesión en el ojo, vos tuviste tu propia lesión en el ojo, lo que él quiere saber es si tu lesión en el ojo te llegó a amenazar la carrera, si llegó, llegaste a pensar en retirarte por esa lesión, y si además pensaste, uy pucha, me quedé sin la, sin la oportunidad de mi vida, quizás que un tren que no va a volver cuando te quedaste sin formar parte de esa cartelera. Bueno, la verdad que es lo que pasó, no sé, solamente... Dios sabe y nada, fue un corte, un pequeño corte eh, en un sparring, pero nada, eh, sí quedé como diciendo, no, quería pelear esa noche en una gran eh, cartelera también, eh, estaba Manny Pacquiao, Spence, pero bueno, no se dio y, y se dio ahora, así que por algo pasan las cosas y hoy estamos enfrentándonos a Mario Barrios y por el título del mundo, así que nada, eh, los tiempos de Dios son perfectos y, y acá estamos para, para llevarnos ese título. Uh, yeah, look, the, the injury itself uh, was a small cut uh, during a sparring session. Did it piss me off? Of course. I mean, I was about to fight in a, in a great car like Spence and Pacquiao where things, you know, happen out, outside my control. But, you know, God, God willing, everything, everything happened the way, the way it, it was meant to. And now look at me fighting fighting here in the Canelo in the Canelo Munguia fight, going for a title against Mario Barrios. So you know, I'm focused on this great opportunity and not dwelling on the past. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Keith. Our next question is going to come from Lance Pugmire with Boxing Scene. Lance, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Great. For Mario, I just wanted to ask you, it seems like right now in the welterweight division, division the C's are kind of parting when you talk about Crawford, Spence, and Danny Garcia going up to 154. This glamour division has this window for someone to step into and really become the star of the division. Have you considered that? And how thrilled and excited are you about that pot potential? Um, you know, I'm I'm very excited. You know, um, I knew you know th that this year, you know, uh, the welterweight division, you know, was was going to be, you know, become very, you know, exciting. You know, there's a lot of things moving around, a lot of things opening up, um, you know, for opportunities and, um, you know, and, and for new champions. And, uh, you know, it seems that, you know, all of us, you know, that are, you know, um, fighting for these titles, that are fighting these title eliminators, you know, um, you know, we, we all have, you know, the same mentality, you know, we all want to, you know, fight the best, you know, we all want to bring boxing, you know, the most exciting fights, you know, the, the unification fights. And, um, you know, so I think, you know, by the end of the year, uh, things are, you know, going to be, you know, even more exciting and, you know, we're going to continue on having those big fights. And, uh, you know, I plan on being, you know, in, um, you know, the majority of those really big fights. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Man. <clears throat> this question is going to come from Ron Goodall with Fight Night. Ron, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. All right, awesome. Um, I got a question for each. First and foremost, uh, Tamara Barros, uh, congratulations on the news with the new baby girl announcement that's coming. So, um, so I'm sure this is going to change a little bit of how you think in camp. But my question for you is that when you think of the Maidana name, right? Obviously, we know that he's been in big fights, specifically Floyd. Are you looking at you know his brother kind of the same way? Like he may potentially bring that same type of intensity that was brought to Floyd. Yeah, no, you know, definitely, you know, if not the same intensity, you know, that same, uh, that same focus, you know, that same drive, um, you know, how he was saying, you know, he had, a, you know, the, an opportunity to come up beforehand on um, that fell through and, you know, and that, but, you know, now, you know, he, he has another opportunity, you know, so I know, you know, he's not taking this fight lightly, you know, I know he's going to come with everything and, um, you know, that speaks a lot, you know, on him. You know the type of fighter that he is you know and i definitely know i i respect that um you know shout out to him you know for taking this fight you know stepping up um but yeah you know i'm expecting you know a another you know hard um hard fight 
Um, I'm preparing, you know, myself for, you know, a um, a brutal 12 rounds, you know, regardless, you know, how the fight goes. So, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm excited. Awesome. Thank you. And to Fabian, um, <clears throat> I, I, I can only imagine that his brother spoke to him about a tough fight against Mario Barros, who's been a seasoned fighter who's won his big fights recently. Um, what has his brother told him, you know, in preparation of this fight, if he can reveal? Eh, ¿Qué podrías revelar en cuanto a consejos se trata de lo que te, de lo que has hablado con tu hermano, de los, de, de también de lo que te, de lo que él te contó también de su experiencia como pelear en un campeonato mundial en Las Vegas? No, la verdad que, que no, no, no hay que transmitir mucho. Sé que es un, sabemos que es una gran pelea y que, y que bueno, que, que hay que dejar todo en el ring y demostrar que, que ganamos la pelea eh, y bueno como siempre eh, salir a pelear y, y a dar todo pero él no te dijo nada Marco no te no, no te dijo nada en particular no no me dijo que es una gran pelea y que, que hay que tirar para ganar hay que tirar muchos golpes uh, you know what he told me he was like this is a great fight and in order to win great fights you gotta throw a lot of punches So, you know, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out there and, you know, like fight like, like a world title fight is supposed to be fought we, uh, with all my heart, with all my grit. And I'm going out there to show that, you know, that the Maidana, that the Maidana name is still up high there. All right. Thanks so much for those questions. Uh, next up, Carolina T. Uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask your questions. I have two questions for Mario. Mario, you said you kept good people around you. Are there any particular fighters, trainers, etc., that are specifically based out of San Antonio that you've leaned on mentally during training camp? And if so, what advice have they given you? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've I kept the like same team from the you know from the very beginning. Um, but you know, like um, all the coaches and everybody you know from back home. Uh, you know, that I have always, you know, kept around, you know, been around, uh, you know, all the fighters, you know, uh, you know, my good homie is on Bam, uh, Bam Rodriguez, Josh Franco. Um, man, there's like, there's so many names, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, we, we all, you know, we, we all keep in touch with each other. You know, we all, you know, are still, you know, behind each other, you know, hundred percent. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful, you know, that, you know, San Antonio has, you know, that, um, that close knit, you know, boxing uh, community. Um, but yeah, you know, like the, kept the same people um, behind me. And um, yeah, you know, I, I know, you know I still have their support and everything. So, I mean, you know, that, that means a lot to me. Um, and did, I, I know they're supporting you. Have, have they given you any particular advice? And then I have one last question. Oh, Nothing particular, you know, they just, you know, always give me their their support. You know, I know if I ever need anything, I can reach out. Um, you know, so like that's 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 the important part. Okay. And also congratulations on your bundle of joy. I know you are preparing for this fight, but are you prepared to be a dad? <laughs> uh I, I think I'm prepared. Uh, or you know, I'm doing my best, you know, to be prepared, but you know, Thank you for the for the congratulations. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward, you know, to this fight. You know, I'm looking forward to being a father. You know, that later, you know, later this year. Um, but you know, first things first. You know, I had to go out there, you know, May fourth, and uh, take care of business. All right. Thanks for those questions, Carolina. Our last questions for today are going to come from Ernesto on the door with no play days for sale. Ernesto, please unmute yourself. You can ask your question. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, let me start with Fabiano. Eh, Fabiano, un gusto verte, querido. Eh, qué, qué difícil ha sido tu carrera, a pesar de tu apellido. La gente cree que porque te apellidas eh, Maidana han sido las cosas fáciles. Todo lo que se ha cruzado en tu camino te hace ser la versión más peligrosa del TNT Maidana para esta pelea. Sí, bueno, la verdad que, que la gente compara, pero no, no. O sea, mi hermano fue un grande y lo admiro mucho y pero bueno, nosotros estamos forjando nuestro camino y nada, venimos bien preparados, ¿no? Tuvimos eh, una carrera dura y bueno, gracias a Dios, hoy se dio esta oportunidad con, contra Mario Barrio y pelear el, el título del mundo. Así que nada, venimos con toda la fe, bien preparados y, 
y a dar una batalla para, para poder ganar ese cinturón. Uh, the question from Ernesto was, well, it was more of a statement in, in, at first where he was like, the Maidana name, in, people may think that, you know, it may think it's easy for the younger brother, but it hasn't been the case at all. His, his career has been tough. Uh, what has that meant uh, for him in trying to, to forge his own path? And, uh, you know, Fabian was saying that, you know, like my brother, he was a, he was a boxing great and I admire him, but I forged my own way proudly so and now i'm going i'm gonna go out there on may 4th and put up a battle a, a battle that you know that people are gonna enjoy put on a show and then you know hopefully be able to be remembered for what i do and you know to be able to 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 forge my own legacy uh, finally mario uh, uh, nice to see you it's not about mario anymore it's not about mario's food anymore it's about your family food uh, it, it makes you hunger than ever, you know, because now it's not about you anymore. It, it makes you hunger. Yeah, no, 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 you know, um, 100%. Uh, I'm excited, you know, and I have a, uh, I'm very motivated, you know, now, you know, how you said it's more than just me, you know, now, you know, I'm getting ready, you know, to, uh, you know, have a, have a daughter, you know, have, uh, have a family. And, um, so yeah, you know, this is a, it's a different kind of motivation and, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm excited, you know, to go out there, you know, Cinco de Mayo weekend, it's a big weekend, you know, for, uh, for our, our Mexican people, our, uh, our gente. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward, you know, to giving everybody another great show. All right. Great. Thank you for that, Ernesto. And thank you to all the media that joined us today. Uh, we also obviously <clears throat> appreciate you, Mario and Fabian for your time. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ray to get closing comments from the fighters. All right, thank you very much. Fabian Maidana, Saturday, May 4th for the interim WBC welterweight championship of the world. The co-main event of Canelo Munguia that comes our way on a prime video. It is PBC pay-per-view. You can also purchase it at DAZN.com. What is the result going to be against Mario Barrios, Fabian? Bueno, Fabian, danos un vaticinio. ¿Cómo termina la pelea contra Barrios? Bueno, la verdad que no, no te puedo decir nada, solo sé que va a ser una guerra y, y va a ganar el mejor ese día. I can't tell you how it's going to end. All I know is, is that it's going to be a war and that the best man is going to end up winning that night. Mario, for you, I know you're fighting with extra added motivation as you spoke about at length, but how's it going to go down on Saturday, May 4th? I think it's gonna be, you know, the a really exciting fight. You know, I know, uh, you know, Madonna, you know, he's he's coming with it. Um, you know, he's hungry, and um, you know, we're gonna give fans, you know, um, a great great fight. And you know how he said, you know, the best man is gonna have their hand raised. Um, but I'm gonna do, you know, whatever it takes, you know, to make sure that's me. All right, thank you very much to all the fighters. We greatly appreciate it. We will see you on Saturday, May fourth. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. It is PBC pay-per-view on Prime Video. Canelo Alvarez, Jaime Munguia for the Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Also a loaded card, including Mario Barrios and Fabian Maidana. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everybody. Take care. Championship of the world. Also a loaded card, including Mario Barrios and Fabian Maidana. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everybody. Take care.